Well done, this is our last little bit. Uh, this is about alternating and direct current. We need to know what the difference is. Hopefully you remember that from GCSE. And uh, the tricky bit is we need to know what DCPD, so what direct current voltage, is say it gives us the same effect in a circuit of a peak ACPD. Okay, so just a reminder in case um, this has got lost somewhere in uh, your GCSE knowledge. Direct current is what we've been talking about all the time so far. So here's direct current. It flows from positive to negative at a nice constant rate around the circuit. Um, there is this um, little issue that we try and ignore if we can help it because it just causes a little bit of unnecessary confusion really. This is the direction of current, positive to negative. So if you're thinking about diodes and that, the current's going this way around. Um, unfortunately, someone decided about this before they actually knew what the current was. Um, once people had found out that actually the current was made of electrons in a circuit, they realised the electrons obviously are going from negative because they're attracted towards the positive. So the electrons go the other way around. There's nothing actually moving in a circuit this way around unless you've got, for example, some electrolysis going on. You've got some um, some copper ions which are positive going this way around. But in a wire circuit, there are electrons and they're going the other way. But let's try and ignore that if we can help it. Um, the current goes from positive to negative. What's happening to the potential difference, the voltage? Well, it's a constant. So if we put it on an oscilloscope, we'll just get this horizontal line. The voltage is the same all the time. If we do the same thing with AC, right, then what happens is it pushes and pulls. Okay, Sometimes people get confused about how the energy gets around the circuit, but if you think about what's going on the bulb here, the electrons are still being pushed through it, so there'll still be energy lost in here, um, which will light the bulb up. Um, just a little fact to remember, mains electricity has got a frequency of 50 hertz. That means uh, the period of this wave is 0.02 seconds. So this circuit um, is the one that we can use to um, compare an AC and a DC voltage to see if they have equivalent effects. Okay, What we do is we set up a potential divider kind of circuit over here. Um, with the potentiometer so that we can change the voltage across this bulb and light it up with a DC voltage. So at the moment I've got this set so it's on about 8 volts across the bulb. You can see the brightness of the bulb. And then what we can do is we've got the same circuit over here but with an alternating current supply. So if I just flick it across to there, it now lights up with the AC and you can see that the graph on the oscilloscope starts to look like an AC wave. Okay, you can also see here the bulb is changing its brightness. Okay, In the real world, because this is 50 hertz, you won't see that change in brightness. Um, it's flickering, if you like, too fast for you to see, and possibly too fast for the bulb to cool down and heat up again. Okay, But the voltage is certainly changing across the bulb. So the key question we need to answer is, if this is a constant, but this is changing, obviously the peak of this must be higher than this because this is where it's getting its absolute maximum. At other times, it's getting less. So how many volts DC would have to apply um, to get the same effect as a, as a peak voltage, this top voltage up here, of the AC? Okay, so what I do is I look at the bulb, I light it with the DC, I judge the brightness, and then I flick it over to AC, and I adjust the AC until it comes to the same brightness, okay? So I can get whatever brightness I like there for the same average brightness. Consider this, okay? I've got an AC voltage with a peak of 3 volts and I've connected it to a 2 ohm resistor. What shape will the PD against time graph be? So here's our PD in blue. Okay, so I'm going to draw three, axes, three um, lines on the same set of axes here. But here's our PD in blue. So it's going to reach a peak of 3 volts and the period is going to be 0.02 seconds because it's AC, it's 50 hertz if it's mains AC. Okay, so there's the graph. That's what's happening to the AC against time. What's happening to the current? Well, I could f I could take any instant along this graph and I could take the um, potential difference and I could divide it by the resistance and it would give me the current. So, for example, here is 2 volts. So 2 volts is going to give me 1 amp. 1 volt is going to give me half an amp. 3 volts will give me 1.5 amps. If I draw that out, I end up with the same um, sinusoidal shape, the same sine wave. 
just at a smaller value, right, in this case, because this is one and a half amps. Okay, the tricky bit is to work out what's going to happen to the power. Well, we know that power is voltage times current, so here it's fairly straightforward. This is one and a half, this is three, so I'm going to get four and a half watts. Okay, these points are zeros. The bit you've got to be careful of is down here, where I've got minus three volts and minus one and a half amps, but minus three times minus one and a half is still plus four and a half. So the power can't be negative. Um, this would be like a light bulb sucking light out of the room if it was a negative power. Um, so the power graph does that. Okay, so the key one, if the, if the bulb's going to be the same brightness, then it's got to have the same power. It can't have the same power all the time, because this power is changing, the DC one's going to be constant, but it can have the same average power. Okay, so look at this graph again. So I've just got the green graph here. The reason it looks a bit odd will become clear in a minute. And the energy that it produces is power times time. Well, the power times time is the area under the graph. Here's my power graph. It's changing um, its height. Here's the time. Right, but the power times the time is the area under the graph. What I want is an average of this graph. So the way that works is if you take the top off the graph and just turn it round, right, it fits nicely in those holes. So what we find is that the average power is in fact half of the peak power. So hopefully you can see across here at two and a quarter watts, half of four and a half, that would be the same equivalent. The area under the graph is the same. This green area here is the same as the area was when it was underneath that green line. So here is the average DC, uh, sorry, the DC equivalent power, yeah? So if a constant power of that much would give the same brightness as a varying power of that much. So the peak power was four and a half, that's up here, four and a half watts, and that came from three volts times one and a half amps. But the average power is only two and a quarter watts, which is three times 1.5, the same as before, but divided by two. It's half the previous peak power. Now, the, the bit you've got to be clear about here is that you can't just have half the voltage, because if I get half the voltage, I'll also get half the current, and I'll only have a quarter of the power. So what I need down here is numbers that I can divide both of these two things by, which multiply together to make two. Okay, well, so there's two numbers which are the same that multiply together to make two. Well, that'll be the square root of two. So the equivalent DC voltage here is three divided by root two, and the equivalent DC current is 1.5 divided by root two. So hopefully you can see there I'll have three times 1.5 divided by root two times root two, which is three times 1.5 divided by two. So three divided by root two is 2.12. 1.5 divided by root 2 is 1.06, so multiply those two numbers together, I get this 2.25 watts. So a constant voltage of 2.12 volts will have the same effect as an AC voltage which peaks at 3 volts, Okay, which gives us this equation, the equivalent DC voltage is the peak AC voltage V0 divided by root 2. They call this the RMS, the root mean square voltage.